And suddenly Morgoth sent forth great rivers of flame that ran down swifter than Balrogs from Thangorodrim, and poured over all the plain. And the mountains of iron belched forth fires of many poisonous hues, and the fume of them stank upon the air, and was deadly. Thus Ard Galen perished, and fire devoured its grasses, and it became a burned and desolate waste, full of a choking dust, barren and lifeless. Hey guys, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be continuing our timeline of Arda series as we start to get into the heart of the War of the Jewels, with the breaking of the Siege of Angband, which would lead to the eventual demise of many great heroes and kingdoms in the First Age. In truth, I would say we have a few more videos concerning the First Age in the timeline series, and then we will move on into the Second Age. If you're not caught up on this series, I will link the previous and first episodes of the series in the description and cards above, and I'll leave some other related videos in those places as well. I'll leave some related articles for more information in the description too. There will be a lot of information in this video, and I will try to coherently synthesize it as best as I may. Now let's begin our tale about the Ruin of Beleriand and the Battle of Sudden Flame. After the coming of men into the west, and the meeting of Iluvata's first and second-born children, the Noldor throughout the land were mostly content, except those that shared the mind of Fingurfin, such as Angrod and Aignor, as the elves who could yet see the Thangorodrim from far off were reminded of the threat of Morgoth. But the elves in more distant lands came to be content and forgetful of the true evil of the Dark Lord. Six generations of men after Beor and Marak passed, and it was the year 455 of the First Age. Morgoth had toiled long in secret, ready to break the siege that the elves had put upon Angband, his fortress. It is stated in the Silmarillion that if Morgoth had not let his hatred cloud his judgment, and if he had prepared his war for a bit longer, he might have destroyed the Noldor entirely. But his desire to kill the Noldor, and to take and defile their lands overcame him, and he thought little of the valor of the elves, and none of the valor of men. Thus on a winter night, when the watchfires of the free peoples were low, and the guards few, and while many slept in the camps of the horsemen of Hithlum, Morgoth brought his might to bear upon the good folk who dwelt in the north. Morgoth sent forth great rivers of flame quickly from the Thangorodrim. The mountains of iron ignited fires with poisonous fumes. This sudden destruction turned the grasslands of Ard Galen into the desolate and lifeless plain of Enfauglith, the gasping dust. Many of the Noldor died thusly, ere the battle began. The mountains of Arid Wetherin and Dorthonion held back the fiery streams, but the woods upon them burned, causing much confusion among the free peoples who held the fence in such places. In front of all of this fire came Klaurong the Golden, who was now fully grown, unlike when he was nearly brought low by the arrows of the elves many years earlier. Behind him came the Balrogs, and behind them, the orcs in such a number that the elves had never beheld before. They would utterly break the defenses of the Noldor and their allies among the men and Grey Elves, and many good folk were defeated. This would be the start of the warfare not ended until the end of the War of Wrath. Many free folk fled, and most of the Grey Elves came into Doriath, for the kingdom of Thingol was guarded by Melion the Maya, whose powers did not allow evil to enter her realm. Some would go to fortresses by the sea, Nargothrond, Assyriand, or further east, over the Arid Luin, and word would spread of the newly made warfare in Beleriand to the men who yet dwelt in eastern Middle-earth. In the northeast of Beleriand, Glaurong and his orc followers came down upon the lands held by Caranthir, Meglor, and Meethros, three of the sons of Feanor. While many free peoples, including the people of Dorthonion, would stand with Meethros upon Himring, a hill in the north, and the Feanorian brothers Kurufin and Caligorn would hold the pass of Aglon, Glaurong would come south in the pass east of Hemring called Meglor's Gap, taking the fortress upon the western side of Mount Rerir, and burning the lands between the Greater and Little Gelion. Eventually, after the battle, Kurufin, Caligorm, and their people would be forced to flee to Nargothrond. Caranthir joined his brothers Amrod and Amras as they retreated southwards, and they fortified their position upon Amon Areb, and they had the aid of the Green Elves. Thus the orcs did not pass into Assyrian or Tor Im Dwinath. But in the west was a greater onslaught, for many more orcs came that way. The sons of Finarfin would be caught between the hammer and the anvil, as it were, and the brothers Angrod and Aignor would be slain alongside Bregolas, the brother of Barahir. The forest of Dorthonion would also be overrun at this point. 
Further west, Orodreth, who was either the brother or nephew of Finrod Felagund, depending on one's version of the Silmarillion, held Menas Tirith, which was a tower on the island of Tolsirion that guarded the Greater Beleriand from the now plains of Anfauglith. Finrod came north from Nargothrond, and passed by Menas Tirith, coming into the Fen of Sadak, but there he was cut off from most of his people, and he would lose his friend Galmir, a noble elf of Nargothrond who would be captured. Finrod himself would have been captured or slain, if not for the valor of Barahir and his men. This heroism is made all the more glorious seeing that Barahir's ancestor, Beor, was great friends and even a vassal of Finrod, after the elf discovered men in the wilderness. They made a wall of spears around Finrod and cut their way out, saving the elf who returned to Nargothrond. He would swear an oath of abiding friendship and aid to Barahir and his kin, and he gave to him a ring. This ring had two serpents upon it, with eyes of green jewels and a crown of golden flowers. This would become known as the Ring of Barahir after this moment, and it would pass down from Barahir to his descendants. Looking in the north once more, High King Fingulfin would lose many of his folk, such as the man Hador and his son Gundor. In the belief that the ruin of the Noldor was come, Fingulfin rode forth to duel Morgoth outside of the gates of Angband. I go into more depth on that duel in my Brought to Life video about it, but Fingulfin would fall, and his son Fingon would become the new High King of the Noldor. Thus the aftermath of the battle came. The forest of Dorthonion would be overcome by Morgoth's servants, but Barahir's men would stand defiant of them, even as all of them, save Baron, son of Barahir, would meet their ends soon after. Orodreth would withstand the orcs in Menas Tirith, protecting the pass into Beleriand, but Gorthaur, the greatest servant of Morgoth who was Sauron, would come with his sorceries and take the tower, driving Orodreth to Nargothrond. Tolsirion became Tol in Gaurhoth, the Isle of Werewolves. Morgoth's forces and servants were bolstered in this time, as many captured elves became thralls and servants in Engband, and the Dark Lord sent out many spies, and he would also gain many of the swarthy men as servants, for they were men who had newly come from the east. While the Dark Lord feigned pity to all men, few men of the three houses of the Edain came to be in his service. Even in all of this darkness, there was still much strength in the hearts and sword arms of the Free Peoples. The Sindar of Doriath, under the leadership of Beleg Strongbow, attacked an orc legion in Brethil, and the men of that forest under Halmir took up arms with the elves and destroyed the orcs, who would not return to that region for many years. In that time, Hurin and his brother Hur would be saved by eagles and fostered in Gondolin by the elf king Torgon for nigh a year, as Ulmo told Torgon that help would come from the house of Hador to Gondolin eventually. They would swear oaths to keep Gondolin a secret before leaving the city. At this time, Torgon would send messengers into the west, seeking to ask the Valar for pardon, but many would be lost and few would return. Morgoth sought to learn the locations of Finrod and Torgon's kingdoms of Nargothrond and Gondolin respectively, but they would remain hidden for a time. After seven years had passed since the Dagor Bragolok, Morgoth renewed his assault in a siege upon Ethel Sirion, which would slay Galdor, son of Hador, but his son Hurin would afterwards lead the men of the House of Hador in Dorlomen, and they would serve Fingon, as they had served Fingon's father Fingulfin. The Dragon Helm of Dor Lomen was a testament of that friendship, for Fingon had given that helm to Hador many years before, when the fiefdom of men in Dor Lomen had been made. Anyway, in that same battle, Fingon fought to hold back the orcs from Angband, while Hurin pursued the orcs across Enfauglith, and the High King was outnumbered until the coming of the ships of Círdan up the Firth of Drengist, and the elves of the Falas broke Morgoth's army pursuing them as archers on horseback up into the Iron Mountains. This brings us to a good stopping point in the timeline of Arda, but before we end our discussion, we should look at where the major players are and how the story will progress from here. So much happened in this part of the Silmarillion, and it is quite confusing, so I'll try to break it down. At this point, we do not need to concern ourselves overmuch with the dwarves, but looking at the Houses of Men, Hurin ruled the House of Hador and Dorlomen, and Barahir ruled the House of Beor, at least what was left of it in Dorthonion and Halmir ruled the people of Haleth in the forest of Brethil. As for the elves, Torgon ruled in Gondolin, Finrod in Nargothrond, and Orodreth also lived there, and Thingol in Doriath. The high king of the Noldor Fingon lived in Ethel Sirion. The sons of Fëanor were scattered, with Maethros and Maglor being at Himring, Coranthir, Amrod, and Amras at Amon Areb, and Kurufin and Kelagorm at Nargothrond. And finally, Morgoth and his armies dominated the north in the places near to and south of Engband. Truly the Battle of Sudden Flame sets up the rest of the events, stories, and characters to come in the Silmarillion, 
and we will pick up our next Timeline of Arda episode with the events of Baron and Luthien, as well as the union of Maethros and the Fifth Battle, the Nirnaeth Arnodiad, or the Battle of Unnumbered Tears. From the Battle of Sudden Flame and the Ruin of Beleriand, we see just how important alliances and friendships truly are in the face of such terrible and daunting evil. Every instance where our characters came out of danger and were saved were due to the alliances they had. With friendship and kinship with others, the Shadow may never have complete victory. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the Timeline of Arda. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. Let me know your thoughts about this part of the Silmarillion in the comments below, and for more information please check out the chapter of the Ruin of Beleriand and the Fall of Fingulfin in the Silmarillion. Also, please leave any questions, corrections, and additions in the comments as well. Check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for Discord and recent and upcoming podcasts in the description too. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with another video in our What's Different series, where we will finish discussing the Fellowship of the Ring and the differences between the book and movie. As always, thank you all so much for watching and for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.